Mr. Clare here from Clare Maths. Today we're going to be looking at perpendicular gradients. We're going to see how the, if you take two lines which are at right angles to each other, then the gradients times to give, to give minus one. We've got a couple of lines here at right angles to each other. So the theorem is, if you times the two gradients together and you get the answer minus one, then you can say that the lines are perpendicular. They are at right angles to each other. Or, conversely, you can say that if you know that two lines are perpendicular, then the lines times together to give minus one. Now, you might be wondering, why is that the case? So looking at this app here, you can see I've drawn two lines and the gradient of the first line is one over nine, a ninth. But if you take the gradient of the other line, you can see that the gradient is minus nine over one or minus nine. Those two lines are at right angles to each other. It should be obvious that they are from looking at it. And that doesn't matter how much you go take this line round. If I pick a different line, let's say here, the gradient of that line is one third, but the other line goes sloping down the way is minus three. Minus three times a third is minus one. That's a good one. If you look at these, you can see the gradient of the sl line sloping up the way is 5.5 .5 over 10.99. The gradient of the line sloping down the way is minus 10.99 over 5.5. .5. So essentially these are called the negative reciprocals of each other and they're quite easy to find. Let's have a look though, first of all, at vertical and horizontal lines. The problem with these ones is a, a gradient of a horizontal line is just zero. So the gradient of this line is just zero. But if we take the gradient of the vertical line, well, that's undefined. So that's, I suppose, the, the one time when it doesn't work because you can't undefined times zero is not minus one. But you should know vertical and horizontal are at right angles anyway. What do I mean by that? So let's say example one, if the gradient of the first line, let's call it AB, is equal to three, how do I know the gradient of CD at right angles to that? Well, we say it's a negative reciprocal. All you have to do, three becomes a third and minus, minus a third. If you times them together, you get minus one. Let's take a different example. If I had MAB was equal to negative four, then the gradient of CD, nice and easy, is going to be a quarter. Again, that's now not going to be negative because the first one's already negative. If we start off with a fraction, let's say the gradient of AB was equal to a half, then the gradient of CD, a half becomes two, and minus, minus two. These are called the negative reciprocals of each other. You times them together, you always get minus one. Do one last example. If I had the gradient of AB, let's take a harder fraction, was three quarters this time. The easiest way to get the gradient of the other one, if we're at right angles, is flip the fraction upside down, in other words, a reciprocal, and put a minus in front. If there's already a minus in the first one, you can put a minus in the second one. So example one says, given that t is the point one minus two, and s is the point minus four, five, find the gradient of a line perpendicular to st. So our starting point is, let's find the gradient of st. Well, that's just five minus minus two, y two minus y one, over minus four minus one, x two minus x one. So that gives me seven over minus five. And since they're perpendicular, I can just draw that, then gradient of the first one times the gradient of the second one must equal minus one. Therefore, the gradient of the perpendicular line is equal to five over seven. Let's flip that upside down and put a minus in front of that, but it's already got a minus, so it becomes a plus. And we're done. Okay, question two says triangle MOP has vertices minus three, nine, zero, zero, and twelve, four. Show that the triangle is right angled. So we could draw a kind of picture of this, just as a kind of rough sketch at the side. Nowhere near accurate, but minus three nine would be up here somewhere, so that's called that M. There's a zero zero. And twelve along twelve and up four, maybe maybe somewhere around about here. So there's your O and there's your P. We can see here you end up with a triangle. We're not sure if it's right angled or not until we prove it. Now to prove it, we just need to check the gradients of each bits and see if any two make a right angle. We would hope it is going to be MO and O P. So let's check the gradient of MO. Gradient of MO is 0 minus 9 over 0 minus minus 3. That's minus 9 over 3. 
which is minus 3. So we've got our first gradient. Let's check the gradient now of OP. So O to P, that's going to be 4 minus 0 over 12 minus 0. That's 4 12, so we we'll simplify that to 1 third. And just to be on the safe side, let's check our last gradient. The gradient to L from M to P. That's going to be 4 minus 9. And it's going to be 12 minus minus 3. 4 minus 9 is negative 5 over 15. That's minus a third. And we can then save it since we always have to write this little statement. M1 times M2 equals minus 1. Let's just check which 2 times to get to make minus 1. Well, we've got a third. And flip that upside down, you get 3 and put a minus front, minus 3. So these two, MO and OP are perpendicular. And therefore, we can say that the triangle MOP is right angled. Stay around for our next videos which we'll explore this further when we look at perpendicular bisectors and altitudes and medians.